Okay. So anyway, and this is hi everybody. Matt Stevens in Aline, UAE. I'm talking to Hope Kendall in California, I believe. I think hi everybody. You're in Los Angeles, is that right? Yeah. Hi. Yes, I am. She's, mm -hmm. she's, this is uh, the 9th of November, 2014, and we're at a learning together session, but also at EVO moderator training. This is a, a, a session where we're preparing EVO moderators for uh, their courses starting in January and February. And this week, we're talking about uh, badges and certificates. And Hope and her team at Learning Times have done a phenomenal job on putting together this uh, ecosystem for badges called Credsley. And it's uh, mentioned everywhere. Uh, well, I should let Hope tell you more about it, but it, it certainly is a very impressive system. Uh, and Jim Buckingham is here. And Jim ha wrote an article in uh, Tesla EJ about Credly, which we might find a link for at some point. And actually, it's uh, it's in the Learning Together uh, PBWorks uh, page that's announcing this event. That's tinyurl slash tinyurl.com slash learning together. You'll find some links there. I'll put those in the chat once Hope is started. So hi, Hope. Hi. Nice hi, everybody. Us. Yeah. We also have to you. thank Hope for this Blackboard Collaborate uh, Learning Times uh, gives this to us on a grant for I can't remember how many years now, maybe 10 or more. But we really appreciate that. And I always like to thank you for it. Sure. Well, uh, thank you, and and we're happy to be able to contribute in, uh, you know, in any way. Um, being able to meet online and uh, bring people together, and what you guys have done, uh, you know, in terms of growing this community and uh, making it available is just, you know, makes us, you know, makes it all worthwhile. So, um, thank you. Uh, now, I just want to make sure. Um, let's see. I seem to be kind of locked up here. Hang on one second. Let me just see what's going on. Um, maybe I should quit some of this stuff real quick. Uh, I think the screen sharing might be coming from you. Could that be a part of it? Let's see what's going on here. Um, Well, I'm not able to, my problem is that I'm not able to really move around. Um, and I'm not sure if I've got some issues uh, with, if I've got some issues here, um, and I'm, I'm kind of stuck. Um, oh, OK. Uh, how about join me slash hope candle? Is that stuck? Yeah, what I may need to do is I, I may need to log out of Collaborate. Um, I'm not sh again. I'm not sure if the two things together are sort of causing problems for both. Um, mm -hmm. So well, we can pause the recording. Shall okay. we do that? Let yeah, let's pause the the recording and um, and okay. see what's going on here. And we'll come back. Okay. Okay. Back in a few minutes. Okay. We're back. Okay. Over to you. Hi, everybody. I'm not sure where we left off. Yeah. We, okay. So you can explain a little bit about what went on and and just carry on. Yeah. So um. It's kind of strange. I use Illuminate uh, a lot, and for some reason, my application sharing was not being cooperative. So we were trying in that between what last you probably heard on the recording and what you're hearing now, there was a bit of time where we were um, trying to find some sort of workaround. And it's just uh, another example of um, how things, you know, can work, can't work. Sometimes, you know, there's conflicts, and we did the best we could. We we feel like we have a, a pretty good solution. Uh, Vance is going to do some app sharing, uh, and I'll kind of direct him through a couple of things uh, to do a demo. And of course, if we, in the time that we have left, if you 
at the end of that, we can always sort of schedule um, you know, one-on-one -on -one demos. I'm happy to do that as well. But what I wanted to do was talk a little bit about Credly, which is, um, let's see, why am I, oh, Vance, I need to be a moderator. I'm, I'm not a moderator for some reason. Oh. Sorry about that. That's all right. I didn't realize that when I logged in second time. Okay. You got Great. it. Great. Thank you very much. So for us at Credly and at Learning Times, um, and I should step back and just say real quick that, um, you know, my name is Hope and I work with Learning Times, I work for Learning Times, have been with Learning Times for about 14 years, uh, doing everything from uh, project management and organizing of uh, webcasts and conferences and trainings and online teaching to um, some of our newer endeavors which have been going on for the last uh, three or four years, which is uh, digital credentials, uh, Credly, Badge OS, you may be familiar with both of them or neither of them and that's kind of what we're uh, going to talk a little bit about today. So thanks so much for uh, joining me and thank you for having me um, uh, in your uh, sort of ongoing conference. Our yeah, pleasure. Teresa, I, I, was, um, I was a moderator before and for some reason I couldn't um, <laughs> it just wasn't working for me. Um, okay, okay, so... Your robot is awaiting instructions. <laughs> so we're going to do this a little bit piecemeal. I apologize. Like I said, if, if this sort of whets your appetite, then feel free to, you know, reach out to me. I'd be happy to spend a little time one-on-one -on -one or, or rejoin the group um, and figure something out uh, that allows everything to work pretty seamlessly. But Crepe is a badge creator, it's a, it's a website that allows you to create badges and assign them or give them out to people, but it also allows your earners, the people that you give the badges to, it allows them to accept the badges and store them, organize them. So the site itself is what I would call for the creator of the badge, a badge creator, a badge making platform. And Vance, if you want to go to um, where it, at the top of the Credly page there, um, if you go to give and drop that down, we're going to walk through creating a new badge. And what we can do, and then for your earners, it's a place for you, for them to store and kind of launch how they want to use their badges and organize their badges from there. So right off the bat, the minute that you log into Credly as a builder or as a giver of badges, let's say you're doing classes, um, you've got people that are, are completing classes and you say, I want to create badges and give them out as people create classes. Well, the first thing you need to do is create a badge. Now, you'll notice, um, you'll notice that there's kind of a, a, a line of images, icons, along the left-hand side. Uh, it starts with sort of the top image there, and that right there is the badge builder. Also, fans, if you could just move your mouse a little bit down where it says upload your own design, if you wanted to, rather than using all of those tools as a badge maker, you could upload your own image to start making a badge with your own design. So there's two ways that you can go about this. You can create a badge. And Vance, if you could click on that second icon, uh, uh, note one up more, or 
Yep, that's fine. You'll see that there's different shapes that you can choose from. Uh, Vance, I'm going to let you kind of, as I'm talking about this creation part, I'll just kind of let you, you can choose whatever you want to. I'll just kind of speak to what you choose. And then from there, you can go down to the next, which is the icon, the little icon that goes in the middle. Um, so if you wanted to use a musical note, there you go. And then your text. You could change it by default. It says blank text. You can um, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> you can use no text at all, and you can also then decide if you want to choose uh, a border, and you can change colors as well. So it's quite it's quite dynamic um, in and of itself. But again, you could also create badges. Um, in a different application, the visual part of the badge in a different application and upload that. I believe the parameters are that it needs to be uh, no bigger than 600 by 600 pixels if you upload your own badge. Other than that, you can do pretty much anything. And Vance, if I could just ask you to scroll down a little bit, because what you'll see is if you look at the newly given, if you click from new members to newly given, what I love when I go through this is that you see all the different skills here. You see that some folks have uploaded their own badges. You see that a lot of folks have used the badge builder. So it's just about getting as comfortable and familiar with, um, with the badge making process that works for you. One of the cool things is that as Vance is kind of mousing over these different badges, you're seeing that you're seeing the criteria and badge description. And that's another piece of what's really important in the badge creation. It's not just the image, it's the description and the criteria. Um, because the description and the criteria go hand in hand with the image. They tell folks what you had to do as the earner to receive this badge. And we consider that badge we consider that the badge metadata. It tells the story. And one of the things that I think is really important with badges, digital badges, no matter where you use them, no matter who you use them with, no matter what your source is, um, is the criteria. And also, Badges can be used really, I mean, in our mind, and, and I think that this is really important, is that badges can be used um, for a wide range of things. I mean, I have a slide, and I don't have, we don't have to go to it, but I have a slide that really kind of gives this whole spectrum of what badges can be used for. It can be used for commemoration. It can be used for certification. There are, you know, when, when you build a badge in Credly, I'm not certain about other platforms, when you build a badge in Credly, there's a way that you can assign an expiration date. So if you're doing certification and each year someone has to be recertified, you could set a sunset for the badge so that every year someone's got to get a new badge. Um, there's all kinds of things built into the functionality of the badge. You can view evidence. For example, if you want to bring people out to a much more specific page, that drills in a lot deeper as to what the badge means and what someone had to do to complete the badge. Let's say you've got a page that outlines what your course description is. That evidence could be part of the badge itself. And all of this is tied together. They all travel together. So no matter where a person puts this badge, no matter where a person announces that they've earned this badge, all of this information travels together. And for us, we find that to be a really compelling part of digital credentials. Because now you don't have someone saying, hey, I earned my certificate here. Now you got to go over and find out, well, where is here? But if they have a badge as part of their LinkedIn profile, or they have a badge as part of their uh, you know, blog, things like that, 
all of that information is baked right into that experience. I also like to think of it, and thanks, Jim. Um, you know, Jim's comments about the visual and the graphic about baiting, you know, baiting to learn more, or you know, encouraging um, a student or a participant to, to do more. Um, that you could look at it that way, and I think there's definitely some really important conversations about intrinsic and extrinsic motivation that have come up as a result of digital credentials, and I think that's a really important. And I think for everybody, you know, if you're deciding to do digital credentials, um, part of the sort of backstory of digital credentials is that they sort of emerged um, as gamification of learning or sort of as gamification of learning sort of kept moving forward. People were saying, well, that's great, <clears throat> but we want to, if we gamify learning, what's the piece that keeps people moving forward. And badges became one of those badges, tokens, all of those things became a way to keep moving people through a pathway of learning. Um, so badges can be used in that way. And actually, uh, Badge OS, which is something we can talk about too, um, is takes the idea of badges and bakes it into a pathway. We've created Badge OS to work with WordPress so that you could turn a WordPress site into a badge and activity and badge triggering system. Again, setting up a little bit more of a gaming, potentially gaming or sort of pathway, scavenger hunt, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, um, Jim, you know, capitalizing on the interest in earning something. Um, I think I like to in my mind, I feel like Badge OS, and, or I should say Credly, or Badge OS, or really any digital credential, I think what it also does is it creates a bit more of a mosaic of one's personal learning. And I think that's really, really important. Um, if you think about it, when you start to talk about what you've done as a learner, lifelong learner, um, you how easy is it to sort of set that picture or set that scene or create kind of a, a mosaic of your experience? My hope, and I think, you know, I don't know how ever present this is in, you know, the, the larger badging community, but my hope is that badging becomes part of or allows people to create a big mosaic of their learning experiences. And I think particularly, I mean, you're seeing it a lot in, primary education, I think that things are kind of getting very uh, much more narrowly defined in terms of learning tasks, but I think you're, you've, it's been going on in professional development for a very, very long time. Nina's asking, uh, can you do it directly from Credly or do you have to use WordPress? What's the difference? Nina, great question. Um, so you do not, Credly can live separate from WordPress. Credly is its own standalone site. You can create an account on Credly, create badges, issue badges, and you're set to go. Credly can plug into Badge OS. Badge OS is the WordPress side of things. So Credly by itself is not related to WordPress at all. You can install Badge OS. Badge OS is a badge. It turns your WordPress site into a badge platform. So Nina, just to, it's a plug-in. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. So if you said, you know what, I love the idea of badges, and I'm just going to give a quick example of how Badge OS, the distinction between Badge OS and Credly. I, I want to start issuing digital badges, but I don't have a place for people to complete their activities. If I say, I'd like you to go and you know, learn this bit of information, or I'd like you to participate in this class, or let's say you've got a Moodle site, or a, um, think of Badge OS as a place where you can create the activities where people can earn the badges, whereas Credly is just the place to receive the badge, 
and organize your badges? Um, no, I mean Badge OS is something. There are other. There are other. Um, there are other options other than Badge OS. So, for example, um, for example, if you use Blackboard, I believe Blackboard has its own badging um, piece. Um, they sort of integrate with Mozilla Backpack. Um, Canvas, interestingly enough, and I'll. What I'll do is, um, Vance, if you want to go to, if you want to bring up a, a second page, there are APIs um, for Credly. Uh, there's, and I'm just going to put the URL for the APIs into um, the chat real quick. Yeah, so, developers.credly.com. I'm finding out that things I when I move the screen to try to make room on my computer to do other things, it's impinging. There's some incursions on the screen, so I'm trying to get used to all that. So anyway, so, so Nina, mm -hmm. yeah, Nina's question about you know how this all works together. Well, the nice thing is is that we have created a very open a very open uh, architecture for Credly. So if you wanted to take the badge building component and bring it into your existing ecosystem, you could. Now I will say that if you use the APIs in Credly, you, they are, it's not something that you, if you're not a programmer, you won't be able to do this. So I don't want to, um, I don't want to kind of set up a false kind of idea here. APIs, um, uh, right, and Jim is saying you could, you could have your own WordPress installation, install Badge OS, and then plug Credly into that. If you have an existing site, a Moodle site, a Drupal site, you could use the APIs in Credly to create conduits of functionality from your site into Credly. So um, I don't want to get too, too into those details because I think if people aren't programmers, it might feel <clears throat> frustrating to, but rest assured, if you want to, if you have a great desire, um, no, 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 that's fine, Nina. I just wanted to kind of, I, with APIs, if you're not, if you don't know how to code, or you don't know someone who does know how to code, they're not going to mean quite quite as much. But essentially, APIs allow different systems to talk to each other. And the more open of a system you create, the nicer it is for people who come along and say, oh, OK, um, you know, I've already got a Moodle site, or I already use uh, Canvas, or I already use uh, Angel, or I already use something. I just want to be able to plug badges in. Then the APIs will allow you to do that, or allow someone with programming experience to do that. Um, right. And that's the thing, too, is that when we designed Badge OS, the reason why we went with Badge OS being a WordPress plugin is because while we heard from a lot of people that yeah we already have a, we already have a whole ecosystem or a workflow that we want to plug badging into, we heard from a lot of people who said we don't have all of that and we're not programmers. So what do we do? What's our option? Well, WordPress is free, and Badge OS, the Badge OS plugin is free. So for us, that was the best way to approach giving people that don't maybe have a whole lot of infrastructure behind them the opportunity to create a badge based platform. Again, Credly plugs into that, but it also stands alone. OK, so um, Svetlana is asking. So we want to use these badges in Edmodo. Can I? So far, I've used my badges that were JPEG pictures, and that worked. So Edmodo, see, I think that Edmodo has its own badging capability. It may function a little differently um, than 
Credly, but I believe that Edmodo allows you to create sort of just, yeah. So in that case, I don't know that you'd be able to incorporate Credly into Edmodo. Um, and and this is this is kind of where right now the badge ecosystem is. Some systems are closed, as Jim is pointing out, um, and some systems are open. And I think these are important things for people to understand when they're deciding, hey, what that you know, if I'm going to start issuing badges, what how, what what do I want to use and what makes sense to use? And sometimes, again, a closed system or an open system help to narrow those decisions. Um, right. And thanks, John. Appreciate you stopping by. And uh, if I can answer other questions, please just feel free to be in touch. Um, so with Badge OS, or I should say with Credly, Credly you can upload your own image as well. However, you get to assign what's called metadata, and Vance went through that before. Vance, if I could ask you to go up to, up at the top where it says handheld librarian, you'll see it'll drop down and say our credit. I want to just go to, once you've created credit, and I should say, by the way, um, and I see that Ellen has a question. I'm going to get to that in just one second. I just want to also say that Credly is free to join as well. If some of you may already have digital badges from Credly, you participated in a conference, you've participated in a learning experience, and you may have been issued a badge. Once you're issued a badge, in order to save that badge and do anything more with it, you do need to create a Credly account. A Credly account is free to create. So it's free to get started with Credly. So I would encourage all of you, if this is something you're interested in, you can create a Credly account or go to your Credly account if you've already received a badge. And once you have an account, you can start creating badges of your own. You don't need to have a different account as an earner or a different account as a creator of badges. So I hope that's really clear. If you already have, great, awesome, Ellen. I mean, that's, the, that's what we're saying here. With Credly, you can go in and play around, create an account. And if you already have an account because you've received a badge, that account will do just fine. You don't need to change an account or create a new one. So Ellen's talking about the danger is that if it's so easy to create, then people can create their own, in essence, create their own credentials. How can we be more closed? This is a great question, and I see that Jim has jumped in here, and other people have also sort of added their thoughts. And Ellen, I think you are getting at what I think is on the horizon for digital credentials to address and answer, which is how do we take all of these social elements of sharing badges, creating badges, issuing badges, and how do we begin to build up the network of credibility around issuing badges. What is that going to look like? Remember, we're still in a really early phase of digital credentials. But that question is being asked, and I think it's being asked in a lot of really great environments. The question that Ellen put, you know, that Ellen wrote so eloquently, um, which is, the value, the, 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 the meaning, and, and, and the, or the currency, you know, the currency of a badge. What does it mean? And, but, but think about it. Um, when you think about someone saying, so-and-so completed this course, we, we have existing infrastructure that already help us to assign value to the work that we do, right? So think about it. In it's not a really huge leap. You know, it's not a huge leap to say that digital credentials are the next step. They are ideally supposed to build on the existing infrastructure. And ideally, 
and this is one of probably many views, but ideally part of the issue is that you're creating a next level way of communicating the same level of importance and credential um, that already exist for your organization. So bringing digital credentials into your organization does not diminish what your organization is doing. And I think that's also an important piece uh, to, that's also an important piece to recognize. Um, Jim is just talking about a bit of network effect here. The, the more people who earn a badge, the greater the perceived value. No. You know, Jim, that's an excellent question. And I, I would actually, I don't know that that should be a given. I think that currency, I think that it really depends on what it is. And I think that currency is not necessarily about the more that's out there, the better it is. I think that, um, and, and for example, I will, you know, here's an example of a group that I think has done a really excellent job of um, handling the currency question. Uh, a group called Educause. When Educause first started a couple of years ago, they were um, they were using badging as a signifier of attendance for conferences. This was really, really early on. As they've matured in their use of credentials and digital credentials, they were they decided to get rid of just badges for attendance because that wasn't the that wasn't sort of instilling the level of significance that they wanted and they evolved to a place where now they give digital credentials for very specific sets of criteria if you contribute um, to a conference if you're a speaker it's not just oh you were a speaker at Educause it is you were the speaker for this particular session this is what was discussed and this is when it happened same with when you are a participant you have to submit work and then you earn a badge you can attend the conference and you can attend sessions but if you want a badge you have to comply with certain criteria to earn that badge. And they, over a couple of seasons of their conferences and of their learning uh, opportunities, they moved up the rank in terms of what people had to do to earn a badge. And they've had tremendous success. And I think, in my mind, I'm not saying that you have to go through every step that Educause does, but I think it's a great model for understanding how badges can sort of work in your environment. You know, if people are new to badging, maybe it is important that a low-risk badge be issued the first and second time that they participate in your event because it gets them familiar with badging and it opens them up to the idea and then perhaps you start to scale up in year you know in your third event or your fourth event or your fifth event because that now people are familiar now they understand what they're what they're doing um, and what it means and the value of it again we're all learning and we're all sort of creating this scaffold together so feel you know so explore it and, and to figure out how it works for you. Um, and Elizabeth is talking about, it's about the system that assigns the badges and the credit. That I think is a key piece too. If you already assign people credit or assign people, um, you know, a status as a, for participating in what you do, then you pretty much are halfway there. Um, But I think it's important for badging to have the widespread adoption, I think that it could have and really, you know, could sort of help people take the next step to, step to creating where we all do most of our work, 
which is online. Obviously, we do a lot in person too, but a lot of us are doing stuff online already. Our portfolios are online. <coughs> Excuse me. Our portfolios are online. Our, um, you know, opportunities to network are online through LinkedIn. So, so much of what you do socially is online that to be able to incorporate quick and quick visual with a lot of information backing it up are, is a great advancement, I think, in telling people and showing people what you know and what your skills are. So I've gone off on a tangent a little bit, and I'm sorry about that. But, um, but these are great. I really love seeing what you guys have to say about your thoughts about badging. One of the things, let's see, Jose is talking. Yeah, I mean, and again, I encourage you to play around a little bit. You'll see that the site that we're looking at, the Handheld Librarian, this is a conference site, or I should say this is an account that is for a particular conference. Uh, Vance, if you click on create on the Created tab real quick, you'll see that I use this site also for some testing that I do um, for different things if I want to sort of, you know, figure some stuff out. Um, but you'll see that the Handheld Librarian is a conference that um, is going to be sort of morphing into something different uh, in March. But if you click on um, the Vance, if you just go to, actually, scroll up just a second. I want to. Um, I want to, if you can click on the reports tab, just underneath, there you go, thank you. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about each badge as we, um, thanks Svetlana, thank you for joining us. And thanks Teresa, I hope, oh, Teresa's already gone, okay. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, uh, Vance, you'll see that there are, that all the badges that I've given in this account um, are, listed, if you click on, click on the first handheld, the contributor badge, down below, Vance, if you look and see, it's got a little, there you go, yeah, if you can click on that, that will give you a bit more detailed information. Now, the activity, it's interesting, Jim, you brought up that that was a lot of activity. The activity is strictly impressions of those badges. So every time anybody who's issued a badge, any time that someone runs across their badge, whether it's because they looked at their LinkedIn profile, any time that badge image loads or is called from the server, that's considered activity. So that's why that number is so high. Um, but you can see that for each badge, for each badge, you see who it was issued to, did they claim it, if they did claim it, what level of badge activity is there, when it was issued, um, other credentials that that person maybe has, that that person has on the system, um, and let's see, yeah, so these are important analytics for sure, yeah. Um, Let's see, Elizabeth is saying the recognition comes gradually and could be outside the system from the community. Yeah, I mean, there is not, if you are building a new ecosystem of learning, all of that credibility and all of that value is and, and reputation are the same, whether you use badging or not, all of that can be brought to bear and infused into your badges. Um, and Nina's saying badges could, conceive, could conceivable, conceivably help administrators of a program see which of their employees or teachers have done basic or extra stuff. Absolutely, you can create an entire ecosystem that visually shows you what people have done rather than trying to drill down and read some narrative information. The badge is a very quick identification of what people have done. Obviously, if you want to drill down, you can because the badge has metadata and tells you what that person had to do to earn the badge. Thanks, Jan. 
Let's see. How do you follow people on Credly? Uh, Lucia, you can, you just simply, if you, if you, um, you can follow people by uh, just sort of as you, like for example, if I click on uh, any of these names, I should be able to follow this person if I'm, if this account is not already following this person. So, right. So you click on follow and then you can follow that person. Now, I will say that there are some features in Credly that have not, the follow feature is something that may, people are using, some people really aren't using it because there are so many other social network avenues. So I think that it's probably a bit more of an underutilized um, function or feature in Credly. Um, but if you had, let's say you had a cohort of people and you gave them all badges, you could instruct them to follow each other. And you'll notice one of the things I want to point out that Christy Singleton, she was a speaker um, in, in this conference. You'll notice that next to follow, she has a little sort of Facebook icon next to as part of her profile. What this means is that she's linked her, her Credly account with her Facebook profile. And she can decide to send badges to Credly, uh, excuse me, to Facebook so that when she earns badges, her people in her network could see that. She could also have her badges uh, automatically linked to LinkedIn or to Twitter. Um, I see there's some conversations going on here. Sure, Nina, I mean, all of the things that you're suggesting are, you know, wonderful reasons to award badges. And again, I think that, I think it's important to, to, to kind of underscore that the rigor of the badge is what the organization or the person who's issuing the badge brings to that badge. The badges really are an image and they're text. But you as an organization or you as a person bring that value. And that's something I think is really important. It's just like the work that you guys are doing here. Um, you know, this is a, a network of people. And if you were to start giving out badges for participation, it's the value because you've given it out. Not because it's a badge, not because it's something that I can share in all different places. The value in the badge is because it's been given by, you know, EVO. So that I think is um, that I think is the important piece here. Um, Ellen is saying, yes, I agree that your university, which is the biggest and only state in your, in your state, would accept them. They barely accept TESOL diplomas. Hmm. Internal uses of badges. Yeah, I mean, I think I would venture to say that if an organization is struggling to get their arms around professional development, internal professional development, badges may be a great way to stimulate people visually, but it's only going to, in my mind, it's only going to stimulate people so much. The other pieces, you know, all those other issues of a all those other issues of if there's internal issues about training and internal issues about professional development and what people should be doing and how that should be, you know, acknowledged, I think those issues will still be there, I guess is kind of the point that I'm, um, that I'm, I'm trying to make. Yeah, Nina, universities can be slow to adapt. I will say, though, that we have seen a lot of universities taking some really interesting steps. Um, University of Central Florida is doing a whole badging program on um, different areas of professional development. Some of them are IT related and they've made that commitment. Um, they are, because the other thing too is that short of a certificate or short of a diploma, and Vance brought up a really interesting point, um, so I, I want to just jump in for a second there. But short of a, a big diploma, what 
other way do people have an opportunity to show the small slices of learning achievement that they've accomplished along the way? There's really not a lot out there to signify that or to, to bring that about. And digital credentials can be an incredible way, like I said, to create a mosaic of learning. And as you get out of school, you have fewer and fewer sort of what I would call our uh, sort of institutionalized learning opportunities. And so even more important, I think. Um, let's see. So we've got Van saying some employers are saying that badges are more meaningful than a college degree for identifying candidates for the skill that they really want. Well, Vince, I think what you're hitting on is that badges can give a very, can really magnify a small slice of what someone learned. Why? Because you can attach evidence to it. Think about it. Let's say you take a course on, uh, on video editing, right? You're a teacher, you take a class on video editing, and you earn a badge for that course. Let's say it's, you know, over two weeks, you have about six, you know, six two-hour sessions, and it's a significant time commitment. But what if your final project could be linked to a badge so that when you put that on your LinkedIn profile, anybody who comes along and says, I want to, I'm wondering what this teacher knows and I'm wondering what this teacher's, you know, passion is, what they're inspired by. Now all of a sudden you have a digital credential that is connected to your LinkedIn profile that not only says that you completed the course, but it links to your actual video and it's all in this neat visual package. That I think is really, really compelling. Um, and I think, let's see, there's some, yeah, I think that that can be quite compelling. Um, Nina's saying that she's also read that employers prefer badges to diplomas because they provide more specific information. Again, Nina, yeah, the point that I was just making um, related to competencies, badges, micro credentialing. Right, Jim. Um, yeah, I think badges do tend to make people think of, again, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but badges doesn't sort of have a, the same professional sounding, uh, it doesn't sound as professional as micro-credentialing. Um, right. Nina, and Credly, what's really, really cool is that Credly has set up ways that people can embed their badges. So you don't need to bring people back to your Credly account. So if you go to, um, if you go back to the handheld librarian, uh, if you go back to our credit, Now, this particular account only has two badges. If, Vance, can you click on categories real quick? I don't know if there's, uh, categories is under the earned tab, if you click on categories, I'm just wanting to see, okay. So badges earned. Now, if you click on the little, uh, Vance, if you click on next to where it says badges earned, that little end bracket there, click on that. That allows me to basically create an embed code for the badges that I've earned and that I've organized. And you can check off badge titles, uh, issuer names, uh, number of badges to display. So Vance, if you could click on uh, both the display badge titles and display issuer names right there, 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 check that. And just select whatever, you know, uh, yeah, exactly, that's fine, whichever one, yep. And then you click on a get embed code. Now I have an iframe that I can put on a blog, I can put um, on my, um, I can put anywhere really, any place that takes iframes. I can build my own portfolio. But I also want to say that I could also, I don't believe that the, that the handheld librarian account is, um, is uh, I have a LinkedIn account because I don't, I'm not necessarily present on LinkedIn via um, handheld librarian, but I could link my Credly account to my um, to my LinkedIn profile. I can even actually embed LinkedIn profiles to 
specific area, to a specific credit area in LinkedIn, in my LinkedIn profile, as opposed to just creating activities. And there you go. That now is ever present in my LinkedIn portfolio. Yeah, uh, Lucia is saying that she's using an ePortfolio and there's already badges there. Um, we actually are using, we, Credly is linked with um, Pathbright and Pathbright is also a portfolio uh, tool as well. Uh, let's see. Thanks, Jose. I guess Jose left. Sorry already. Um, let's see. Jim, I hope I can't Jim is asking. Sorry, I, I just going to point out some things that I I put in. The, if I can just scroll down to here, I I this is my own badge profile with Credly. I just put it there because it, it shows how you expand the badges. But there are all these other uh, interesting associations with Mailchimp, for example, or um, uh, Smithsonian Institute. I don't know. It's just uh, there's lots of interesting things you can find by Googling what Credly does, and I put a few links to them there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so Jim is asking about a separate link for the badge groupings for the categories. So Jim, I'm curious, much like Badge Backpack does, not just the embedded code. Um, Jim, you're saying that you want people to be able to just get the link for a particular badge and not have kind of all of the stuff around it. Um, I just want to make sure. I think in our mind, link to a group of badges. Well, you can do that by creating categories. If you create a category, you can just save each badge into that category and then those badges would show up, all those badges, if, you're, if they're saved in a category, so let's say you, you speak at conferences and you've got um, a conference, you know, presenter category and you save those badges into your, yes, but the link to the category. So y you don't like that there's a link to the category and not the specific badges. Um, embedding may not be well known. Well, I think what we, one of the reasons why we embed is because we want, because there's a, a lot of data that goes along with it. So I think the decision on our end was made so that people didn't have to sort of copy and paste a lot of bits of code so that the whole, the integrity of the badge stays whole. Um, that's, I believe, the from a technical standpoint, um, sort of. Well, you could actually have your, you could take, if you have uh, a Credly account, you could actually personalize your URL and then embed that URL somewhere. Um, so that might, that would, bring people to your Credly account and show them all your different badges. Nina's asking about, I'm wondering if recipients of badges are able to edit them once they've received them. Uh, no, Nina, they're not. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's a pretty important piece uh, in maintaining the integrity of the badge. Um, so people cannot edit badges once they've earned them. Um, certainly the person or the organization who has the account could edit those badges, but actually their editing of the badges would not impact what pe the people that have already earned it. It would just be for people going forward. Again, the integrity of the badge is really important. Um, so those things have been sort of thought through. Um, Elizabeth saying, but most blogs, et cetera, have an insert feature, so it's simple to do. YouTube has made it familiar most people, I think. Thanks, Elizabeth. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, in my mind, I mean, I, I don't want to minimize if someone experiences technical issues, um, you know, but I also think that, you know, choices that get made in terms of, you know, there's always plus, you know, pros and cons to different choices. I would look at it as if I wasn't familiar with embedding something, it might be an opportunity to learn. And so that would be my sort of, you know, 
my uh, my approach to that. But you know, again, I, I don't want to you know I don't want to shortchange the idea that you know. It, and I, I hope that if people do have problems with the embed code and they uh, reach out to us, that we walk them through it and, and help them with that as well. Um, let's see. Could I say that uh, if people want to talk, just click on the microphone and you can speak to, uh, uh, to Hope. And on what Jim was saying, uh, I think Jonathan came on, Jonathan Finkelstein, uh, one of your partners, came on uh, and talked to us about badge stack at one time. Is badge stack, what's the difference, uh, what's the relationship between badge stack and Quedly? Well, badge stack is actually a former iteration of badge OS. So badge stack really uh, is not in operation at this point. We, there were some development decisions that we made about a year and a half, two years ago probably about two years ago at this point. And <clears throat> that took us from badge stack to badge OS. So <clears throat> you can think of badge OS as the current um, the current iteration of a web a WordPress uh, uh, badging platform. Does that make sense? Yeah, and again, I'd like to encourage people to come forward with uh, clicking on the mic and just ask questions. Uh, say, hope from yeah, reading through do. our text chat. Jump in. Um. Meanwhile, continue reading from the text chat. There's lots of comments and questions there. And also, Jim, your question about a uh, nudge to Credly to match ba uh, badge pack. Um, I mean, we we do. Uh, we do integrate with Mozilla Backpack. So there is a way to link your Credly and um, Mozilla Backpack um, accounts. So and there's a way for the, the it's an open, it's a sort of an open conduit in both directions. So if you link your Credly account and your Mozilla Backpack, badges from either should show up. Um, Yeah, so thanks, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, there, um, I yeah, don't know if I you want to, I don't know if you want to go in that direction at this point. Maybe people have more questions about some of the technical and IT issues of badges, but it's uh, something that's on my mind a lot about, you know, what is the value of badges because I'm using them in a course right now in an online course and mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the things that's fun for participants is the badges will pop up and then they can say, oh, I've been doing all this work and all of a sudden there's this little reward that pops up. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> and I, <clears throat> Elizabeth, I think you're, what you're tapping into is the, whether you use Credly and another component, another you know learning management system or workflow. For example, we you know Credly is integrated with Mailchimp, Eventbrite, Pathbrite, Salesforce, and also um, Haiku. If you use Haiku, uh, Credly is something that you can plug into your Haiku uh, installation. But Elizabeth, your your what you've brought up about when that badge shows up and that reward side of it I think is also really important and there are a lot of people who have talked about the varying degree of motivation and reward based learning uh, extrinsic intrinsic uh, there's a really great speaker um, his name is Scott Nicholson uh, or Scott Nichols who talks a lot about um, he's part of the Syracuse School of Information and he has spoken a lot on that balance, uh, what you're striving for, what do you, what should you be striving for? Does it, you know, is it, how do you take into account individual learners and what motivates them? And how do you sort of structure something so that your, I mean, these are, these are, I think, big questions to ask, you know, and I think they're important questions to ask, but when you think about it, you've got a, let's say you've got a class of, of 12 people and you're trying to understand motivation of all 12 people, um, it's, 
as a teacher, it's another layer. It's a layer you probably often think about because as teachers we want to keep our students motivated. But, you know, those things are really important. And yeah, I would not discount the kind of, uh, the, the sort of like dopamine hit that I don't mean to be talk about it in those terms, but that dopamine hit of I got something. I, I've, it, that's where gamifying education has gotten legs because you do have a lot of people that feel like when they get a reward, it's significant and it motivates them. And I wouldn't discount that. Um, so yeah. Um, so Elizabeth, thank you. I mean, I think, I don't know how much time we have. I think we had only an hour and a half and I could probably, there's a lot of people who could probably talk way more eloquently um, about that. I mean, I could sort of share my own experiences with it and sort of what I've learned um, and kind of what I've observed. Um, there's another great book, I haven't read it completely, but there's a great book called Drive um, that I know a lot of folks uh, reference a lot. Um, and, and I think that, uh, let's see. Thanks, Lucia. I, I appreciate you stopping in. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, uh, Dan Pink, yes, drive. Um, the other thing that I would say is that um, is that, again, creating a pathway of learning um, that's, so Vance asked the question about, you know, badge stack and it's kind of morphed into badge OS. Badge OS is what can allow you to create a pathway of learning. So badge OS can allow you to create the structure that someone has to do, you know, three out of five of these activities and they earn a badge. Credly does not do that. Credly is a badge maker and a badge issuer and a badge organizer, a place to organize. If you want to kind of create a pathway, gamify the experience, have those badges pop up when someone, you know, does three out of five activities or submits their thoughts on, you know, X, Y topic and then the badge shows up. That's something like badge OS. Um, so is Jim having issues with, are there technical issues? I, I'm just making sure that... Uh, no, he's having issues with Illuminate, so I'm just trying to help oh. him there. Okay. Uh, one one thing that might be interesting to um, to see in our remaining time, <laughs> as long as we have a remaining audience, is uh, something that that um, Jonathan showed us in Badge Stack was the how to set the triggers for giving badges. You know, maybe you could walk us through it here in Credly, so that you give someone that dopamine hit when they do something, and you don't have to intervene mechanically. You can set an algorithm to do it. You know well, what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, and I'll get to that in one second. Elizabeth, I just uh, I just want to sort of read Elizabeth's comment real quick. Please. Creating a pathway of learning still implies. Thanks, Janet. Uh, thanks, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate your participation. So Elizabeth is saying creating a pathway of learning still implies that learning is a linear activity. But there could be a nonlinear way to earn a badge, and that could make it quite different from a typical syllabus driven grade. Elizabeth great point. Um, you know, how do you create, how do you create a, rather than it strictly being a pathway where step A leads to step B, which leads to C, D, and on down the line, can you create a, a badge constellation? Can you create a constellation of learning where there's different dependencies or different pathways to achieve similar results. And that is a really important question. Um, and in my experience, people do, I think we are still at some really early stages of people creating pathways that are interdisciplinary, uh, multifaceted, but again, um, yeah, the constellation. So Vance was talking about, so Vance, just to be clear, Credly does not allow you to create those pathways. 
Credly allows you to, you would, if you were using Credly, you would plug Credly into another system that might help you create those pathways. Um, if we wanted to go to, uh, if we wanted to go to uh, an example of a site that uses Badge OS that um, kind of creates those pathways, there's a few. I'm going to use something that, I'm going to use uh, a site that used Badge OS and didn't do a whole lot of customization because I think that there's some examples out there, for example, um, you know, the Dallas Museum of Art, um, the YMCA of New York. Uh, are, we just recently wrapped up a project that was, um, that was with the, well, they're, it's actually, they're well on their way, but uh, before, at the beginning of the summertime, we launched a project with uh, the Prince um, PCLS, it, which is in Tacoma, Washington. It's a county library system, Pierce County Library System. They do a whole reader engagement program. But they're, these are examples that, did, that had a lot of customization and might kind of overwhelm. Yeah, Jim, Dallas Museum of Art um, actually changed their entire, uh, changed their entire um, friends program to have it be more of an engagement program. So rather than saying, hey, you're a friend of the library and therefore you get all these rewards, they used all the different <coughs> components, all the value they have at the museum and brought people to these different learning experiences and said, as a friend of the library, it's almost like we owe you you this engagement. We owe you, you know, this is a way that we give back to the community by creating these different ways of learning and experience the museum. And if you want to be a friend of the museum, be a part of, you know, be a part of, the, be a part of this engagement and participate this way. So they really sort of upended the traditional notion of a friend's program. Uh, exactly. Well, one of the, if you really, if you want uh, to Elizabeth's question about um, about motivation, um, Dallas Museum of Art did some really. If you go to, um, I think the the leader of the Dallas Museum of Art, I think his name is Rob Stein. Um, if you do a search on motivation rewards, online learning, museums, and Dallas Museum of Art, um, there was a, com a specific conference that um, I believe Rob Stein presented a paper on that is just, it's, it's, it's fascinating. Um, it's, it's, you know, it talks about, I'm trying to, get the URL, I see that, yes, Museum in the Web, thank you. The Museum in the Web conference, thanks Vance, this is wonderful. Um, nurturing engagement, I mean, it's, it's very specific to the museum world, but it's a really great read if you want to understand, you know, their process in understanding engagement, because um, I think that even if, you know, even if we talk about that, um, I think it can impart value into how we all think about engagement, even if we're not a museum, you know, we're, we're not a museum. Um, so Vance, you were saying, let me put in, let me go ahead and put in a, um, a URL for a, well, this is, okay, so this is a great, let me go ahead and put in a URL for a great program that used Badge OS. Um, excuse me. Um, so the link that Vance is clicking on is a project called High School Choice. Um, uh, it's for sixth and seventh graders in New York City to help identify what it is they want out of high school. 
Uh, New York City has over 600 high schools that students can pick and go to. I think there's some that maybe have some specific requirements, but for the most part, students put together a list of like eight or ten high schools that they want to apply to or that they would like to be admitted to. And that's the process, you know, that they have to go through. Can you imagine as a sixth year as a sixth grader, if you that's a pretty early age. Most of us kind of live in environments where we're we just go to the high school that's our local high school. But in New York, you have to choose and you have to create a list. What you know, if you just kind of pick random schools, the point of this program was to help students under learn about themselves a little bit with these sparks these sparks of knowledge that help them think about what they want to get out of high school. And this created a pathway for all these different types of sparks and helped students learn information about the thought process, reflect for themselves the thought process, and then ideally when they are done with all the different activities at this site, it's not just that they're earning badges, although that does motivate students, but they're hopefully having a better idea of what's a better list of high schools for them. Uh, let's see, so there's some, let's see, Jim is saying, if the criteria is spelled out very clearly, then I see the ability to empower many and more quickly expand. I think, Jim, you're tapping into what is ultimately can be a big challenge, because I think in a lot of times, professional development can sometimes, particularly professional development, isn't always thought of in a more holistic context. Um, so I think that, and it is, in that respect, it becomes a bigger, uh, how shall I say it, a bigger project to think about it holistically, to think about how, like a con like to go back to, um, to go back to the idea of a constellation, you can decide that you're only focusing on a very small bit of a constellation. But if you can think about your learning as a constellation, well then when you start to expand and when you start to grow, you kind of know at least the beginnings of the directions that you might want to grow into. Okay, um, let's see. And people outside scouting recognize that badges are valuable. An Eagle Scout has all those badges, and even if outsiders don't know what they are, they do involve, they understand what they do involve, there's respect for the achievement. Well, and I think that again, you're now starting to see where all of this can kind of intersect um, and um, advance. Just real quick, if you want to go to the course map, you see, yeah, course map, you'll see that now, because, I'm sorry, I don't have a login for this or else I could show you the back end, but you can see that for this, they kept it very simple. Four levels, four or five quests per level. You do them in order and you get the badges. And ideally, look, I think ideally it's not just about collecting the badges, although you can tie rewards to collecting badges. The reward ideally is, at least in some part, the fact that people have learned and come away with an accomplishment of learning what they set out to learn. Uh, let's see. Um, reminds me of Russell in the movie Up. <laughs> Dead son on earning his assisting the elderly badge so he can become a senior wellness explorer. That badge is fundamental part of the plot. Nina, you know, the idea that, I mean, again, you're, I think you're tapping into motivation, extrinsic motivation. For, for Russell, that badge meant everything. And I think that I wouldn't discount that. You know, you may find that not as many adults, I mean, I, I don't know what the numbers are of adults that are motivated by rewards and badges, but when you look at the world of gaming, the world of, you know, getting points, uh, competition, I mean, you know, kind of little c competition, not capital C competition, but when you look at that, I mean, it exists for a reason. It exists because if done effectively and holistically, 
it does motivate people, you know, and sort of, and, and positively, I would say. I think we've all probably had <laughs> experiences where competition can feel very negative, and the mode, and what people try to do to motivate us to compete can feel kind of negative. But I think we've all had experience, I know that I've had experiences where I've had great coaches, I've had great teachers that have pushed me in a positive way, pushed me to find what motivates me in addition to things maybe outside of me. And I don't, I, I think those are wonderful things. Uh, let's see, some great comments coming in. And again, feel free to hop on the mic if, if you want to. I, I don't mean to, you know, kind of dominate the mic here. Um, okay, let's see. Blue, blue. This is Ellen from Mexico. Can you hear me loud and clear? Yeah, Ellen, we can hear you. It's a little quiet. Let me see if I need to raise my volume. Can you raise your volume, your mic volume a little bit? It's done. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. okay um, it's very interesting. I live in Mexico where, I mean, I just made this comment where we're known, well, not me, I'm a, it's my adopted country, but Mexico is known for corruption. Mm -hmm. And you would not believe all of the fake diplomas, the reproduction of seals. I'm in order, I, it, it's just totally amazing. Even my master's degree is not accepted here because it doesn't have a certain stamp on it. It's mm. very bureaucratic. So I see personally these badges being used within a teaching context to motivate my students, to motivate um, teacher trainees within the programs that I work, but I don't see them being used in an institutional setting. It's great, but I think that anybody can reproduce it. Well, anybody could, um, but so if you're doing, so if you're doing Badge OS, um, certainly people could, you know, create a whole other WordPress site. Um, I mean, ideally, they would not be able to get your domain. Um, so, you know, because we're talking about if you create a WordPress site, you've got to get a domain. You could have it hosted somewhere if you want to. But there are certain things that, obviously, yes, there is there are ways that groups of people could sort of co-opt what you've done. And for that, what are the ways that you, know, you could do all of the different things that one would do on the internet to make sure that people know that, you know, the URL that they're using is the right URL. I don't know if in Mexico they have the same emphasis on .com versus .edu. I mean, I know that even in the United States, you know, there's for-profit universities, there's for-profit colleges, and, you know, edu doesn't necessarily mean what it used to mean. Um, so, I, not, not even that. I'm talking about anybody who's an educator or anybody who gives a class anywhere or anybody who wants to get a job can create their own badges because most institutions are not as digital mm -hmm. as they are here in Mexico as they might be in the United States or Los Angeles where you are. So I'm looking at everything that's happening here and I'm going, wow, wouldn't it be great if and then I say, oops, these people don't even know how to turn on a computer. So how would a digital badge help them? We've got, sure. I mean, it's a whole different set of standards. Um, how, I mean, how else can I say it? Sorry. No, I, I think that that's really important. I mean, you know, you, um, you know, if, if you, if, there's no doubt that there's big swaths of the world where, you know, despite the fact that a lot of people have the internet because they've got a mobile device, that seems to be quite uh, kind of, you know, outside of certain parts of the world, a lot of people have, you know, connection to the larger world, but it's mostly on their phone. It's a mobile, it's a mobile connection. So, you know, you're, you may be, there, there's, in all likelihood, very many pockets where digital badges, you, you're still sort of dealing with some 
larger institutional sort of countrywide issues that this may not be the step you're taking next. Um, I get that. Um, but again, you know, so for Ellen, if you think that this could work on a smaller scale with your teachers, then the beautiful thing about Badge OS and as a WordPress site is that you could create a small little password protected site, create badges, create steps for learning, issue badges, and it could be a very internal thing. It doesn't have to be, you know, the, the value, there's a lot of different sort of value sides to all of this. I mean, think of, uh, you know, the value here is sort of multifaceted. It's not just one thing. It's not just that badges can be shared with other people and in a larger network, although that's great. It's that, you know, it is as um, Elizabeth was talking about and, you know, all of you have pointed out, it's the, that pathway, that constellation of learning that's taking place and when a badge pops up that you earn it because you completed X number of tasks successfully, it's a great reminder of the serendipity of learning. And so that, if there's nothing else that happens with badging, that alone I think can create a really fun and engaged group of people for learning. I, I um, agree with you. And we're chatting away here um, in the box and, and basically Nina's bringing me back onto, onto track because I was thinking about Prezi and where else can we put it because that is the point of an EVO session for moderators as well as people who are going to take the EVO sessions to take what we're learning to apply it in so many other different circumstances and to basically grow from that. And I think that Cresley is incredible and I think that many people will be able to use them and I think that is something that we should probably look very closely into ourselves. I know that um, Nellie is going to be giving another badge session on <laughs> Tuesday. I don't know if I should stop talking at this point. No, no, no. Keep talking. I just was, uh, <laughs> Nina just put in incredible, 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 <laughs> and I'm going to have to coin that. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I can't wait to get off the chat so I can go play with Credly. That's basically what I'm, <laughs> I, I've got like four windows open at the same time and I'm going, okay, let me get back to Credly. It, it really looks like a great, um, a great little program. There is a point that we raised a couple of, um, like, uh, 30 minutes ago, I think when Lucia was still here from Italy, mm -hmm. and she said, so it's only wordpress.org, not wordpress.com, so can we embed it in free WordPress sites? So here's the way, I'm just going to type into the chat sort of how this all works. Okay. So wordpress.org, you download the plugin. For, for WordPress. Now, WordPress.org is where you get the plugin for WordPress. You do need to have some sort of place to host a WordPress installation. If you don't something have a place, something that you pay for then, which means that's good because that helps control um, the credly, um, the badge giving a little bit, I think. Well, certainly the fact that, so it's WordPress, I'm going to just keep typing here, plugin, then you get the Badge OS plugin, and then integrate Credly with Badge OS. And that's a, a really simplified. Now, Vance, if you go back to, so if you go to Badge OS, if you click on, if you scroll down a little bit, because the Credly Custom Bat, that's the short code to allow, that, that's a specific short code. See under authors for this particular plugin, and you see where it says Badge OS? Yeah. Uh, scroll up. Vance. 
This is not the Credly and Badge OS integration. This is if you wanted to create custom assertion links, that's a different thing. So Vance, no, uh, Vance, if you go on the right hand side and scroll down, you'll see authors and you see Badge OS. Click on that, click on Badge OS. And it will bring you to, click on the plugins link. And it, click on Badge OS real quick. This is how, once you install WordPress somewhere, this is how you would get the Badge OS plugin that will turn your WordPress site into, as it says here, an achievement badging and engagement system. Users can complete steps, they can submit information. It would all happen within Badge OS. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate you stepping in. Thanks for all that you contributed to the session today. Thank you very, very much. Now, if you look in the second paragraph, it says you can share your Badge OS badges via Credly with Mozilla. So there is a Credly integration. There's a plugin that you can add to your Badge OS installation that will allow you to take badges out of Badge OS and have them show up in Credly. And that's the piece that here, I will, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let me go to, um, let me go real quick to add-ons here. I'm going to just put a URL into, I'm going to put in a URL to, there's the creepy. Hang on one second. This is so cool, Hope. I really, really appreciate you walking us through all this. I'm, we, we've lost a lot of our our live audience, but I'm sure we have a um, an online audience that's going to be listening to the MP3 or watching this later. Uh, we certainly had a lot of people come in and try to learn more about this. Hang on one second. Yeah, sure. And I'm gonna. Um, I'm just going to put a quick, this is definitely, I mean, you're talking about creating a system. So I, I don't want to, um, you know, I don't want to, I'm going to put this in here and, and we could probably wrap. I mean, I, you know, if folks, I, I could sit around and I could talk about this for, for a really long time and I could get really into all the minutia of it because I, I find it really interesting and fascinating and there's some really there's some really wonderful work that people are doing um, but I also respect that it's probably might be 8 30 almost 9 o'clock at night for some of you um, and uh, yeah and um, but yeah, it's, this it's, it's you really are building Sorry. I'm sorry. When Steve Hargadon, when Steve Hargadon gives a gives a, a session, he always says he always cuts it off at the hour. He says we have to, you know, um, consider our presenters and all that sort of thing, you know, for for the uh, uh, well. Anyway, I mean, learning together sessions can go on. You know, we're all learning together. So it is nine o'clock here, though. My wife is has a different point of view. So anyway, just to to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> but we really appreciate this kind of session where we can really talk and interact and um, you know learn from you. So thank you yeah, very much. Sure, sure, no problem. I just wanted to put the, as the last thing. I just wanted to put that URL about the the Credly integration because you know I think that I think that the thing that I've seen work the best for folks is to sort of take this in small steps. You know, if, if you don't necessarily need a whole platform, maybe don't worry about the Badge OS side of it right now. Maybe just get familiar with Credly, issue badges, see the different ways you can issue badges. You can issue badges 
via someone's email address, or you can set up what's called claim codes. If you don't want to do all of that email management, you can set up your badges via claim code. That claim code can be embedded in the badge URL, and then people don't even need to enter the claim code when they accept their badges. I encourage you to play around a little bit with those. If you have questions, you know, we didn't get to as much in terms of really drilling down into Credly because we had some technical uh, difficulties with my app sharing, but I would be happy to, you know, spend a little bit of time drilling down on Credly. Um, it is free to get started with. And then if you decide, you know what, I really want to sort of create those pathways. I want to sort of create the constellation, and I don't necessarily have a platform to do that. You can think of your learning, man if you have a learning management system or a website, that in and of itself can be considered your constellation. What do people do? Where, you know, how do they go from step A to step whatever is the last step? And if the last step is earning a badge, fantastic. If the last step isn't earning a badge and you want to incorporate badges, maybe Credly just needs to plug into what you already have. Um, Elizabeth, you're saying the system is built into Blackboard. Are you talking about Collaborate or are you talking about Credly? Uh, no, I'm using Blackboard at, with the University of Oregon, and it um, has a badge system built into it, so you can set the criteria. And this is what I was saying, the students are, are, see this pop up when they have completed so many tasks, uh, a badge will pop up for them in their achievements. So this whole system is, is already integrated in the Blackboard, and the teacher can set the criteria that will award the badge as the students go along. So it's a nice system to, to use for yeah. the I mean, Blackboard, so, otherwise it's sort of eh. <laughs> yeah. But you know, but that, but see, so we, so Badge OS, that, what you just said, I couldn't have said it better myself. Badge OS is that for people that and might not have access to Blackboard. We don't have the system, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, this is, this exactly. is great. This is how to work around a, a big expensive system like Blackboard. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So thank Thanks you. very yeah. much, Hope. I've really appreciated all of your information and understanding. <laughs> Absolutely. My pleasure. My pleasure. Happy to yeah. thank you for having me. I, I also want to thank Hope and also thank Vance for, uh, for bringing Hope to us and setting it up. It's been a great um, and very enjoyable session. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm sure people will benefit from the recording. Those of those who left early, because uh, if, if I had left early, I would want to hear the complete recording. Right. And, uh, yeah. So this has been great. Really appreciate it. Hope. Thanks very much. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. And again, I'm 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 terribly sorry about my app sharing. I, I, I use Illuminate quite a bit, and don't have and didn't have any problems even earlier in the week when I was doing a training for someone. So. Um, I am not sure if it was a connectivity issue or what have you, but thank you everybody. Um, thank you very much. Thanks Vance for the opportunity for us to talk with everybody. Um, and I guess if you have any questions, I'll put my email address in. Um, that's a great way to reach me um, or hope at credly.com is another way. Either way, those are two uh, great ways to get in touch if you have any other questions. So thanks everybody and have a great evening or great rest of your day, um, depending on where you are in the Same world. To Same <laughs> to you, Hope. Yeah, you really day. appreciate yeah, nice yeah. you. Today. Nice to meet you thanks too. Thanks so much for supporting care. EVO and TESOL and Webheads. With, you know, we, we use this uh, system on, on uh, Blackboard Collaborate Illuminate from you extensively. And everybody is so appreciative. We really appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. Sure. Happy to do it. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.